Hello everybody, this is Stranger Gamer back to finish off the group stage and we are finishing off with Group H. Yes, three matches to go until the long ass group stage has been completed. And in these matchups we will see Random Guy 86 taking on Jonas Chu, what a massive game at the bottom that could be. Dan X Tactile taking on Dendro and Arctic Warriors going up against Lepoke. Ooh, big matches here. I mean, Dan X Tactile and Arctic Warriors are already through. But, these two spots are still up for grabs, and the winner of this matchup will also pretty much assure their place in the last 32 as well. And that is the match where we will kick off, group, finish off Group H, so let's get on with it. Well, I don't think I need to repeat myself on the significance of this match, because in the red corner, for Random Guy 86, we have an Augustinia. And um, been mixed fortunes for random guys so far, but Group H is a quite a competitive group, considering that there are no bot teams in this group. Anyway, in the blue corner for Jonas Chu, we have a Baryonyx. Jonas Chu started the tournament so strongly, but has faltered ever since then. But can they get back to winning ways? And a win here will also secure their place in the last 32. Well, I'll have to double check first. I think if Random Guy wins, then yeah, I think Random Guy will be safe, but because Jonas has less points, if they win, I don't think it'll be enough, but they'll need results to go their way. But defeat here for either of these two combatants will end in elimination. Ooh, the Baryonyx starts off with a water sword. Strong start from Jonas Chu. But there's the blunder type effect from the Augustinia, nullifying that scissors move. But the Baryonyx does get off the hit. And Jonas Chu well on top early on. But one hit from Augustinia could change that as it does have all the rush moves. But we're not going to see him in this matchup because the Augustinia is going to bite the dust. Alrighty then. Up next for Random Guy, we have a Yang Chuangasaurus. Will we see all the dive moves in action again? Or will we not? Hopefully for Random Guy's sake, we will see some dive in action. You're gonna go to Gugu, eh? <laughs> Oop, the lag of death. Another tie. Will Random Guy actually get a hit this match? Okay, yes, Random Guy finally gets his first hit of the match. And Tupu for a dive is coming too. Oop, that's a tie. Random guy 86 though, pulling it back. I mean, he's not that far behind, considering he's only had one hit this whole match. Random guy 86 is not that far behind, as I said. But Jonas Chu still has that slight lead. As the Baryonyx goes down. Oh, hang on, I need to get my notepad. Because up next for Jonas Chu, we have a Super Turbosaurus. And we've definitely seen what this guy can do. Was mightily impressive in the first matchup for Jonas. <laughs> I always forget to get my notepad out because I got, I got a list of all the, the combatants and how many, all the certain rules and such. So I don't forget. Oh, that, my friends, is a tie. Ooh, the burning dash has been triggered. But there will be no burning dash yet. Ooh, Yang Chong has saw us getting off another hit. And Yang Guira died to come too. Yeah, boosh. Okay, that's one. Okay, awaken mode on three for Jonas. Ooh, here comes a fire cannon from the Tarbo. Blip. Boo. Blip. 
good. Ooh, and a flare sword as well. Is this curtain for Yang Chuangosaurus? Indeed it is. And Jonas Chu has a 1-2-1 lead. Alright, as for Random Guy's third and final diner, we have a Super Duper Chomp. Uh, we haven't seen too much of this guy. I mean, the main focus for Random Guy's team is with Augustin Yun and the Yang with the, those moves. But, maybe we'll see what this Chomp can do. Uh, okay, Awaken Mode on 5, so... We might see it, actually. We might see it. Ooh, the Tabasaurus, though, has got other ideas. Another fire cannon coming, and another bit of damage dealt. And will it be another Flare Sword? Not this time. Oh, guess twice. And next round, it'll be Awakening time for the Tabasaurus. Ooh, but I don't think we're going to see it, because Chomp gets off the head and finishes off Tabasaurus, and evens the score for Random Guy. Alrighty then, as for Jonas Chu's third and final dino, we have an Allosaurus. And, well, we saw glimpses of what it could do last time out. And it did pull pull the match back for the Jonas against Arctic Warriors. I mean, it died in the end, but it did pull it back a bit. But it's going to have his work cut out here if it's going to get past Chomp. But, as we did see in the anime, the Allosaurus absolutely demolished Chomp. Ooh, the chomp ain't having any of it. Another crit coming, and here comes Electric Charge. Right, that's twice. Ooh, another hit from Chomp. Chomp on top, random guy on top, and Jonas not looking good. Yep, and that is game over for Jonas. The Allosaurus biting the dust and Chomp getting revenge. Random Guy 86 takes the win and has pretty much assured his place in the last 32. But as for Jonas, it's a group stage elimination. Righty ho. We'll update the table and we'll move on to our second match. Alrighty then, in the red corner for Danix Tactile, we have a Gigant Spinosaurus. Danix Tactile yet to be defeated in this tournament so far. After three wins and that big draw and that famous draw. Do, 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 do. Um, if this if Danix Tactile and Arctic Warriors end up level on points at the top, I don't really know what I'm gonna do. Anyway, in the blue corner for Dendro we have a Ceratosaurus. Hope for, hopefully that scenario won't happen then I don't have to worry about it. If it does happen, then um, I'll do a 1v1 match between the two of them. And I'll pick their first dinos. To pick, I'll pick their first dinos against each other. As a, like a 1v1 match. And whoever wins that match will, go, will finish first. And then the runner-up will finish second. If I need to. Which hopefully I won't need to. But Danix Tactile off to a strong start here. In comes the Gaia Mountain. Oh, 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 oh. Oops. Ooh, not too much damage dealt though. Here comes the tie. And another tie. Not a tie. Ooh, but the Ceratosaurus strikes back. And here comes a Cyclone, which will definitely help given the volume of ties we've had so far in this match. Ooh, but a second chance for Gigant Spinosaurus to get off that Gaia Mountain. And hopefully I don't screw it up this time. Okay, rock, paper, scissors. Okay, we got it better this time. Come on, give me something good. Scissors, rock, paper, scissors. Oh, that was easy. Ish. Okay, we got it there. We got it there. Well done, B. Well done, B. Big damage coming. Ceratosaurus is way and woo -hoo -hoo. Almost killed it. 
Okay, my my misclick didn't matter. The Gigant Spinosaurus still killed the Ceratosaurus and still gave Danix Tactil a 1 0 lead. Alright, as for Dendro in second dino, we have a Super Mimus. It's gonna have his work cut out here. Super Mimus is gonna need to pull this back because the Gigant Spinosaurus is looking pretty strong. And Danix Tactil looks is looking in a good position to keep his unbeaten run going. Ooh, Gigant Spinosaurus on top. But, because all its power is in the crit, its rock and scissors moves won't do too much damage. So that could be a saving grace for, for Dendro. Ooh, as Dendro gets off a crit of his own. Is this a shockwave? Indeed it is, which means... Uh, I don't think a tie will be enough. I think the Giga Spinosaurus will survive by a sliver of HP. Come on, give me something else. Well, we're about to find out. Oh, it doesn't survive. The Sugamimus taking out Gigant Spinosaurus. But the Gigant Spinosaurus is revival type. Which means if it dies in a tie, it gets to come back once. But... The Sukamimus taking no chances and finishing it off for good this time. Righty-ho, as for... Danex Tactile's second dino, we have a Majungasaurus. Gotta get my wits about me because the, its crit is Air Raid Storm. Skip! Can Danix Tactile extend their lead, or will Dendro continue to fight back? Oh, no Cyclone, no. Ooh, that, my friends, is a tie. Danix Tactile still has a decent lead, and a lead that has just been extended, no matter how messed up I make this Air Raid Storm. Uh, pick the scissors paper, and that should be enough to kill the Suko, so I don't need to, I don't need to do the other bit, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Scissors rock pick the paper. Here comes Air Raid Storm, a move that will finish off the Suko Mimus and give Danex Tactile a 2-1 lead. Yombush. <sighs> okay, as for Dendro's third dino, we have a Corythosaurus. Watch out for that super impact. It could be key for Dendro to get back in this match, but it is going to be tough because the Majungasaurus will be at a type advantage, and that could be crucial. Oh, but the Corythosaurus does get off a hit. But, yeah, look at that. That's, that's what the type advantage can do. And you'll see one hit from a Majungasaurus. If it gets one off, you'll see how much damage that will do. So yeah, definitely looks good for Danex Tactile. Danex Tactile looks set to win this match. Ooh, here comes a Sonic Blast. Although, I don't think the type advantage applies when Sonic Blast activates, so... Griefosaurus will take standard damage. <laughs> uh, let's get us a 6. Oop, that's a tie. Oh, here comes another Sonic Blast! Danex Tactile hammering home the advantage! Blah! Blah! I forget what that does. I, I should really brush up on these moves. Yeah, I also have a video like explaining what all these moves do. So you should check that out. And yeah, that's game over for Corythosaurus. And it could possibly be game over for Dendro. Of course, that all depends on how the next matchup ends. But that is another bonus point win for Danex Tactile.
Ugh. And that makes things a little bit awkward, because if um, Arctic Warriors win their match, wins their matchup, they're going to be level on points. Uh, awkward. Right, I'll update the table and we'll move on to our final match of this session. The final match of Group H and the final match of the group stage. Alrighty then, up first for Arctic Warriors we have a Mega Raptor. Been mightily impressive in this tournament so far. And I probably say has carried Arctic Warriors in most of the matches that they've played in. Arctic Warriors yet to lose in this tournament. A win will put them level on points with Danex Tactile and make things awkward for me. But it's going to be tough because up first for the Pope we have an Albertosaurus. This Albertosaurus will be at a tight advantage against that Mega Raptor and that could be key to stopping Mega Raptor from getting early momentum. Of course, we've Mega Raptor in the detective's advantage before and it's killed things in one end. But we'll just have to see. One thing's for certain. Oh, here, here we go again. Mega Raptor getting off the crits, getting off the hits, getting Arctic Warriors a 2 0 lead. I'm sorry, Lapoke, you're gonna lose this match. Ooh, the tie attack, though. Another tie attack. Ties suit the Albertosaurus more. But that will definitely suit Albertosaurus more. Talk about putting all your eggs in one basket, the Mega Raptor's gonna take some big damage. And with if Flare Sword activates, Lapoke could race into a 1 0 lead. Ooh, Mega Raptor not so tough now. The Albertosaurus making quick work of it and taking out Arctic Warriors' best weapon. Alright, as for Arctic Warriors, the second dino, we have an Alpha Suka Minus, and I think this is the first time in the tournament where Arctic Warriors is actually behind in a match. Actually, maybe the first match that they were behind a bit, but were they actually behind in a match? You know, where Mega Raptor has died early. So it could be interesting. Well, I will say, this Suko does have the type advantage, so I don't expect Albertosaurus to run away with this match. But it does get off a hit. And as you can see there, the type advantage helping Suko from limiting the damage. But Flare Sword will make up for it. Lapoke looking strong so far. And I should also point out that Lapoke's second dino will be at a t will also be at a type advantage against that Suko. Which could be key because only a bonus point will do it for Lapoke. Anything else, and there'll be a group stage elimination. Okay, the Albertosaurus finally taken out by Super Minus. But the Super Minus did sustain damage. So Lapoke still has that slender advantage. Alrighty then, as for Lapoke's second dino, we have an Albertoceratops. Seems to be quite a popular choice in this tournament for some reason. And what I will say is, as I said before, this thing will be at a type advantage against Asuka, which could be key to Lapoke getting the bonus point win that they need. Ooh, and that's a good start there. A hit right off the bat. And yeah, look at the type advantage there. One more hit and the Suko is gone. But the Suko does get off a hit of his own. It's an Aqua Whip. To give the Alberta Ceratops a little bit of a whipping. However, look at that. The type advantage helping there as Alberta Ceratops sustains little damage. And there's the hit from Albertoceratops to finish off the Suko and give Lapoke a 2-1 lead. Now it all comes down to this because... As for Arctic Warriors' third dino, we have a Megalosaurus. Not much to say here because it has all secret moves. But what I will point out is... Something I pointed out in my mod showcase is the fact that this Megalosaurus, this very little hint of purple, if you get if you catch my drift. Ooh. 
big hit coming from our boot the Ceratops, but this Megalosaurus will be at a type advantage over, over it, as it will be over every other dinosaur type. But the type advantage not helping there. Cricket. Ooh. Has the Pope done it? Has the Pope got a bonus point win? Is it curtains for Megalosaurus? Oh my god, it is! Um. Well, well, well. Le Pope dominating there and getting the bonus point win that they need. And that will also eliminate Dendro from the group stage. So, Le Pope from the brink of elimination has somehow snatched that last spot in the last 32. And has advanced from the group stage. Wow. I'd say well done to Le Pope. Ooh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is a fine way to conclude the group stage, isn't it? I'll update the table. And we'll end the session. Well, that is how Group H will finish. We have Danex Tactile on top with four wins and a draw and two bonus points. The only combatant in this tournament to remain undefeated. Then we have Arctic Warriors in second. Thankfully, they lost, so I don't have to. So I don't have to sort out the awkward situation that could have happened between these two. On twelve points, still mightily impressive by these two. Could these two go all the way? We'll just have to see. And then we have Random Guy 86 in third after after getting that crucial win over De Jonas Chu to book their place in the last 32. And then, by the skin of their teeth, we have Le Poke in fourth after that big bonus point win over, over Arctic Warriors. And then poor Dendro out by virtue of the fact they lost to Le Poke. What's, what's your highlight of the group stage? What would you consider your highlight of the group stage? Like, leave a comment down below. What, which match do you think caught your eye the most? I mean, I could think... I could probably do, like, a top 10 group stage matches. And I know which one would be near the top. I think this matchup between these two would be near the top by because of the draw. It's been the only draw that we've had in a tournament like this. I mean, there's been draws in, like, 1v1s, especially during my fire tournament, but... Any tournament that's, that have involved you guys, this is the first ever draw we've had. And it will probably be the only draw we'll have in this tournament. Shows how rare it is. Um, and we also have the one where DBW won 3-0. The only, the only combatant to actually win a match 3-0 and not lose, lose a single dino. Which was quite impressive. I mean, the strange thing about that match is that I didn't, it didn't feel like DBW dominated that match. I mean, who were they playing against? Uh, Chompstan. It felt like Chompstan got hits in as well. But, because of obviously Blazing Spin on the Uteraptor in particular, all DBW needed was like one hit and it killed stuff, and he killed stuff. And I think that rinsed and repeated with the T Rex, it just one shot things, kill things, kill things, kill things. So that's why I didn't feel like DBW dominated that match. Uh, biggest surprise, definitely took a nightmare, 100%. I would. Quite a shock to see Token Nightmare out at the group stage. I really thought they'd do well in this tournament. But they def they definitely had a bit of rotten luck. They really did. I mean, compare their luck to someone like Tors. You know, it's a bit ridiculous. You have Tor with an Alpha Acrocanthosaurus. It gets off Volcano Burst. It gets off Flare Sword every single time. And yet, an e Omega Eocarcaria, which has almost four times the technique of an Alpha Acrocanthosaurus... Doesn't get Flare Sword, doesn't get Volcano Burst, doesn't get Heat Eruption. Like, Toka was just very unlucky, and in another, on another day, Toka could have easily finished top. Would have easily finished top. So yeah, that's 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 the group stage done. So stay tuned for next time, where the real fun begins with the last 32. And until then, this is Strange Gamer, signing out.